Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to another episode in my page to screen series. In this series I read or reread a classic book and then compare all of the different film and TV adaptations that there have been. If you enjoyed this video there is a playlist in the description box of all the other page to screens that I've done to date. In this episode I'm going to be talking about Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. Now this is quite an interesting choice for page to screen because there are only two adaptations of it, one from 1939 and one from 2014. So two very different perspectives there on how you go about adapting a book for the big screen. Um, there will be spoilers obviously for Jamaica Inn all the way through this video. Just so that everyone's up to speed on the plot, Jamaica Inn follows the story of a young girl called Mary Yellen whose mother dies and she has to go and live with her aunt Patience and her uncle Joss, who she's never met, in Jamaica Inn which is in the southern moors of Cornwall. Uh, while there she learns that her uncle is involved in smuggling and much of the plot involves Mary trying to get her aunt patients away from Joss and away from the bed of evil that she's come entangled in. Other characters include Joss Merlin's brother Jem and also the vicar at Altonan, uh, Mr Davy, who turns out to be quite a shady untoward character. So the first adaptation that we have from 1939 was directed by Alfred Hitchcock and stars Maureen O'Hara as Mary Ellen. Um, this is a hilarious adaptation. I think apart from the title, this barely, barely resembles the plot of Jamaica Inn at all. For one thing, Mary Yellen is so beautiful and so posh and she has such manicured eyebrows. It's um, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen, considering she's supposed to be a farm girl from another part of Cornwall. This film takes the characters of the magistrate and Mr. Davy the vicar and moulds them into this buffoonish character of Sir Humphrey Pengallen, who is both magistrate and also orchestrator of the smuggling. A lot of the film takes place at his estate, which is just a lot of buffoonery happening around these lavish dinners that he's throwing. Um, the smugglers themselves aren't that scary, they're kind of a little bit naughty. And in fact, the character of Jem Merlin doesn't exist either. Instead, we have someone called Jem Treherne, who is part of the smugglers gang, but he's actually a police officer. He's not a bad man. And he's pretending to be a smuggler to get in with Joss. And uh, Mary saves him from almost being killed. And then she falls in love with him. Um, and it's all okay because we can't have Mary falling in love with a thief now, can we? There's really not much for me to say about the film because it's just not Jamaica Inn. It's just a film about smuggling with this kind of cartoonish pantomime villain. I mean, the ending is absolutely ridiculous. He turns up and ties people up and um, it's just all a romp. I mean, th there's nothing really that happens that follows the plot. Um, so it it's hard to take um, a critical view of this film. One thing that this film does do is make it very obvious from the outset that Sir Humphrey is a baddie and he's actually behind all the smuggling. This is a fault I found in Jamaica Inn when I was reading it that um, I thought it was quite obvious that the Vicar of Altonan was the baddie. Like, I, I think it was made very clear. But Mary had no idea, and I didn't feel like the book was written in a way that the reader was meant to know something that Mary didn't. I felt like it was just a fault in the writing that I knew that. So what this film does is what I think should have been happening in the plot, really, which is that um, Mary and Jem don't really know what's going on. But as the viewer, you know that this person's evil and they sh they're going into a trap. So I think they handled that a little bit better. Apart from that, I mean, it's just, I mean, the real adaptation that we want to be talking about here is the 2014 TV miniseries. Now, I think this is a really, really good adaptation and it doesn't stay very true to the book, but I think it handles all the themes of the book really, really well. When this series came out, it was actually criticised quite a lot for the actors mumbling, um, particularly Joss Merlin. I, I do feel like half the time I can't understand what he's saying. To be fair, I found that okay because I found it very uh, realistic, it's very atmospheric, and he's quite a scary character, so if you don't really know what he's saying, I almost feel like that adds to it. So I didn't have a problem there, but I think potentially if you're not from the UK, it could be a struggle to listen to people talking in a Cornish accent under their breath if they're mumbling quite a lot. So that could be a criticism there. What I most enjoyed about this series is that I felt like it corrected a lot of the faults that I personally found um, in Jamaica Inn when I read it. So Jessica Brown Findlay is a really good Mary. Um, she's quite tenacious, but I mean, just by nature of 
where she is of her situation and her being a woman she is quite powerless um but she's very involved all the time when you read the book it is very obvious that mary is against smuggling but she doesn't really seem to know what to do um and i liked that jessica Brownfinley had a little bit more um to her similarly with aunt patience in the book aunt patience is so downtrodden she barely even speaks she's so scared of joss but she also won't betray him i loved aunt patience in this adaptation because she knew full well what was going on in the first episode she is there helping the smugglers getting the stuff off the beach um as is mary in fact and they are very upfront with her from the beginning like we are smugglers like that's that's what's happening here there is a relationship between them which is um quite believable although i think a bit labored like they do lay it on a little bit thick but i love that she knows her own mind and she's standing by her man but she's doing it consciously not just because she's scared of him. Something else that I found a bit lacking in the book is that there weren't very many main characters and what I really liked about this adaptation is that they added characters in. Mr Davy um, has a sister who is in with him on all of the bad things that are going on. There's a young uh, sailor and um, his fiance who are involved in the smuggling. Um, it just feels like there's more characters, uh, that the story has a little bit more depth um, and it gives a bit of backstory to what's going on. I mean like Mary comes along saying oh my father was killed by smugglers and then Joss is like no your father was a smuggler. I mean that, you know it's not in the book but it's fine because it just it gives a little bit more um, background to the plot. It depends how purist you are about literature, I suppose, um, whether you would enjoy this adaptation or not. I mean, it does get a bit racy between Mary and Jem um, in a way that is, is quite unrealistic, I think, for the time, but I loved it. I mean, you know, Jem Merlin, mate, marry me tomorrow, like, he was gorgeous. There was only one point where I felt it went a little bit too far, and that was um, the end with the finale. I felt like it all got a little bit weird. I mean, in the end of the book, I think Jem and the police come and find uh, Mary and the, the vicar's taken Mary away and they come and find her and rescue her. Um, but with this kind of Jem went by himself with the vicar's sister and they had this weird shoot off. Um, it just, it went a bit strange and I felt like we never really got a sense of Mr. Davies motives. Like we never really understand why he was, what he was doing with Mary. Um, but do you know what? I, th I think the plot of the book's a little bit poor in that regard. So I think they did really well with the source material. The sweeping shots of the moors were absolutely beautiful. I thought it was really atmospheric. Um, yeah, I think if you're, you're a fan of Jamaica Inn in general, I think you will really enjoy this adaptation but it is not exactly the plot. So just keep that in mind. It depends what you want going into these adaptations, I think, and I am all for artistic license. I find it quite annoying when filmmakers literally transpose exactly what is in the book, because then I think, well, what's the point of view? I could have just read it. So I like when they do something a little bit different, but you know, that's my opinion. So I would love to hear from you below if you're a fan of Jamaica Inn or not, if you've seen either of these adaptations. A lot of you have asked me to do one on Rebecca, which I'm very happy to do, I don't think there's that many adaptations of Rebecca either actually, but I will warn you, I didn't like Rebecca either um, as a book. I'm not a big Daphne du Maurier fan. So, you know, if you really want me to do Rebecca, I am happy to do one. Um, I don't know how it's gonna go down. My next page to screen is going to be a little bit different and it's going to be on Peter Pan. And I am really excited to do this because I have a beautiful copy of Peter Pan and Wendy, which I've not ever read. But I am really looking forward to actually reading it because I feel like the story is so much part of our collective consciousness and there's been so many different interesting adaptations of it. So I am looking forward to that. That will be coming in about six weeks, hopefully, if I keep on schedule. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.